Welcome back to Great Day. Chewy's is not only for, known for their big as you'll face burrito, but also for their eclectic decor. For decades, the restaurant walls were swimming with fish art. Michael Quinn is the artist behind those fish with attitude. For this week's Local Lens Houston, Christina and Ralph get schooled by the artist himself as they learn how to be an artiste. Just one across the face, because I was a little bit rude. Go ahead. <laughs> On the road again. I can't wait to get on the road again. So we're on the road. We're going to Santa Fe, Texas, which is essentially Greater Houston. Right. We are going to see Michael Quinn and his art gallery. And he has some pieces that you're not going to see anywhere else in the world. Nope. Because he's an original. The great thing is, he is going to teach us how to make art. I'm kind of an artist. You wait. You are. So let me show you some. You keep driving. Don't show me now. I can't stop him on the highway. You might have to pull over for this. I made these. <laughs> you look like Will Smith. Well, yeah, I made them in 1991. That, they have pockets. There's a pocket. Look, I stitched that. I am an artiste. Yeah, yeah and smell them. They, they smell like old I material. I don't want to smell them. OK, are we done smelling? <laughs> Do I just go in here? Check out that pig. I love it. I wonder what his name is. I know. Hi, Mike. Hi. I'm Christina. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Ralph. Hey, Ralph. Nice Pleasure. to meet you. I need to see a little bit of love before I'll be found. You're gonna need another horse to drag me around. I think I was born an artist. I started making things when I was 10 years old. Uh, out of ceramic clay uh, a few doors down from our house and then it came full circle all the way when I was in college and I wasn't doing that well in vet school and I took a ceramics class as an elective and then I decided or it actually turned out I started selling some pieces to the people that were my classmates, classmates. Yeah. and then I thought you know light bulb went off I said hey I could sell this stuff so it was really odd in a way because it was something that I never really valued being able to be creative and to make things and then it turns out it was actually the most valuable thing that I had. You have your fish inside the Chewy's restaurants. For 18 years we did. Yeah. Yeah, we sold tons of fish in Austin. That's really kind of what put me on the map was my Chewy deal. And I look, we do a lot of internet sales on fishwithattitude.com. Yeah. And, uh, and then we also uh, have our studio showroom that's also open to the public uh, with appointment. Okay, Chris, it's time for survival items. What did you bring? Okay, if you heard the term starving artist, yeah. I hate to be hungry. I know. Oh my gosh, where did you get all this? Did you steal this from work? I brought food. I, you don't have to eat it. Well, I'm, I'm, it's I don't my want survival it. item. I don't want to eat it. All right, not your stronger survival item. I don't think, uh, not a lot of thought went into that. <laughs> Starving artist, Are hungry. You, is survival item's gonna get canceled because you're not putting enough thought into no. it. Fine. What was your? Okay, order? I brought something appropriate for this event: a spackle clay thing, and I brought some gloves because I don't want to get my hands all dirty. This is what I want you to do, so you'll feel better. I just go ahead and slap me with this. Just do it. Just one across the face, because I was a little bit rude. Go ahead. <laughs> They slap me hard. Uh, okay, you feel better? <laughs> All right, you. your survival items still suck. I've got a million dollars. I don't own no rocks and pearls. I don't live the high life, baby. I just want you in my world. So Mike is just a really nice guy. So anytime we do something, he's like, no, it's good. It's good. It's that you did it right. And then, but, but when we walk away, he goes back and fix it. he's got to fix it. <laughs> Let's do this. Okay, this is uh, a slab of clay that I'm rolling out with a rolling pin. The project we're going to do is we're going to hand build a pelican, a freestanding pelican, kind of similar to the pelicans back there. We want to give him like a, a round little belly. Oh, okay. Have at it. No, it's okay. Each person gets a beak. Thank you. Pinch it on one side. Okay. We taper it. Any work that you do with your hands is, is very uh, fulfilling. And to get lost in, in building some mythical creature is just therapeutic. I think I missed the tail. That is a tricky project, I will say. 
I mean, now you're just get you just feel bad. You f uh, you feel bad because it's so ugly. No, I I think it's beautifully done. <laughs> but to fix it. But. <laughs> what? Stop. I you're missing the whole point of this. I'm. The whole point is that we're out here. We're telling everybody that's watching about this cool thing you can come see and thing that you can do at home. You're and you're focused on the imperfections. Who cares? But watch. Let's see if we can fix it. We'll <laughs> Thank you, positive Polly. Boom. We did it. We did. Mike's, Ralph's, Christina's. I like it. I think we did a good job. For two people that have never done that, B minus. <laughs> B minus. Well, I'm not gonna give us an A. Where are you gonna put yours? In my office at work. Okay, so that I can see it every day? Yes. Good job. Okay. I got in one little fight and my mom got scared and said, You're moving with your auntie and your uncle. In Bel Air. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Michael Quinn is with us right now, and I just want to let Christina and Ralph know the Pelican Society of America called, and, and they're concerned because, like, this one right here um, has a tail, right? That's all good. This one missing the tail. <laughs> uh, this one missing the tail, and it rocks. Okay, but, but uh, again, I'm not the one saying this. It's the Pelican Society of America. <laughs> Look them up online. Okay, you know what? When we have imperfections, that is part the coolness of art. Exactly. That's uh, what we call a happy accident. Yeah. My son was in an art class once and they had to do these these like roses with a pedal and the pedal was flat. When the teacher showed it to him, he bent his. He goes, uh -huh. I want it to be more like a real leaf. And she's like, it, that's not the instruction. He goes, does art really have instruction outside right. of Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so as a kid, you said you were born to be an artist. I, looking back, I would say yes. I mean, all of my brothers and all my friends were all pretty talented, so I never really thought it was all that valuable. Yeah. And then years later, you know, like I said in there that about the vet school, and then I thought, if I'm going to compete, i got to do something I'm good at. Yeah, and the, the thing was, oftentimes we do something that we think people want us to do. Like, being a vet sounds great, right? Being yeah. a doctor sounds great. But it, you're, you think you can't make a living at something that you love so much, like art, and you can. Yeah. It's amazing. I've been doing it for 28 years now. Yeah. So and, uh, when you were two years old drawing on the wall, did it look, look better than the average two-year-old? Yeah, I was thinking about that. Actually, I got in a lot of trouble for drawing <laughs> growing up, you know, and then it actually turned out that it was a, a good thing. All right. So I'm going to finish a project here so in the office we can put our trio of, uh, of pelicans. So sure. I'm going to paint the nose. Yep, and I got okay. this brush loaded up for you. All right, you. there you go. Okay, let's see if I can do this part here without painting his eyes. And then while I'm while I'm doing this, oh, look at that right there. Oh, this is so much. It is it's therapeutic and Fun. Okay, there we go. I know the audience is like watching paint dry, but that's okay. I mean, <laughs> I'm loving it. What would you say to somebody who also has a hobby they love, a passion they have, but they're afraid to jump off the ledge and do more with it uh, publicly? Well, I, I think you just have to commit, and then things have a way of working themselves out. If you, if you make the conscious decision to just go for it, you'll find that all of a sudden things just start falling into place if, you, if you're really truly committed to it. It's kind of an amazing thing that, uh, you know, just being self-employed, you don't get paid on a Friday, but if you, if you stay committed and you're working hard, then good things happen. And it There's a great artist, Nathan Jones, up in Dallas, who I always remember him saying, art, you can't eat it, you can't drink it, you can't sleep it, so what's it good for? We build these big museums to house it. What is it for? I, I, it's it's culturally um, significant and that it represents what people value or mm -hmm. or things that they're interested in. I mean, it just it's so wide open. Self-expression, all those types yeah, of things. Yeah, yeah, and, and there's a lot of uh, good things about you know art therapy for people that have experienced trauma. And um, yeah, this would be some good art therapy for people who experience trauma right here. Yeah, go ahead. The, there you go. The piranha. You can become yeah. the piranha in your life and not let anybody ever do anything wrong to you again. Yeah. Okay. Let's take a look at this piece over here. Sure. Because what's cool about that, it's kind of like a living art piece because it changes every time you bring it out. Yep. Yep. So it's kind of a new concept we're doing where uh, we get other people to paint over each section of it and it just kind of evolves as you go. Uh-huh. So we're going to... Do it. Okay. Well, this is fun. Oh, I could do a lot of this. You're going to come to my house and see my living room wall just done like this. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Okay. And lastly, your advice to get somebody to just do something artistic. So I think a lot of times people are afraid if it's not going to be perfect, then they're not going to do it. 
Yeah, uh, it, I guess it's it's wide open. It, if you want to, if you're interested in painting or photography or music or any of those, uh, it's just a matter of uh, going and, and doing it every day and just being committed to yeah. to getting better every day. And it's not wrong. Right. There's no wrong. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me on. Very cool. You can make some bold strokes and explore your inner artist at the next great artist event with Michael Quinn. It is a collaborative painting experience held at Kahuna Joe's in Kima the first and third Friday of each month from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Is there wine involved? Sure. Okay. This yes. is, you know, get even more creative. Okay. Yeah. Go to GreatDayHouston.com for more information on that event and to reach Michael Quinn's Fish with Attitude. You can see more episodes of Local Lens by visiting YouTube.com slash Local Lens Houston. Up next, we'll speak to an organization that's helping ex-female offenders get back on their feet. Oh, but before we do that, wait a second. Ralph. Okay, Ralph was yeah. in Local Lens. Okay, you just changed clothes. What's going yeah, on here? Well, it turns out the shorts still fit. But, yeah, these are the shorts that you made in that piece. Yeah, yeah. hey, don't zoom in. Don't oh. zoom in. What are you oh, doing? You made those in a home ec class, them. didn't you? Yeah. yeah. He, yeah. Ralph made these in a home economics class. Made in class. America. Okay, so you should have been sewing the button on my jumpsuit this morning instead of our guest. Uh, probably not. Yeah, okay, all right.